the AC Service Tech Answers Podcast with your host, Craig Migliaccio. Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio, and today what we're going over is the approach to troubleshooting for a forced air gas furnace. So the first thing is, as you're walking up to the, the furnace, maybe with the building owner or the homeowner, you're, you're looking at the outside of that furnace to determine what the efficiency is. So as you're walking up to it, if it has a large uh, metal exhaust pipe and it has a big open hole, not a grilled hole, but an open hole in the front of it, that's likely a 60 to 70% efficient forced air gas furnace. That's likely also not going to have a control board for the fan, but it will have an ignition module, most likely, unless it has a a combination valve with the thermocouple. If you're walking up to the, the furnace and it has a smaller metal pipe, maybe it's a B vent, and you see a louvered door, that's likely an 80% efficient furnace, and that's going to have an inducer motor, whereas the 60 to 70% efficient furnace does not have an inducer motor. It actually slows down the, the heat rising up the chimney by drawing cold air in through that large hole in the front. But for an 80% efficient furnace, it is uh, pushing the exhaust up through the smaller exhaust pipe. It is still drawing the air, however, from from wherever the uh, the furnace is located at, whether it's inside the house or in the basement or uh, up in the attic. So if it's inside the house and it's 80%, or if it's in the in the basement, it's 80% efficient furnace, it is drawing your house into a vacuum or the building into a vacuum. Now, if you are walking up to the system and you see PVC exhaust pipes, then that you know is a 90% efficient gas furnace. And what it's doing is, is the energy transfer is so great that it's able to lower the exhaust temperature low enough to where it can exit through a PVC pipe without melting it. So, you know, PVC pipe is going to have zero clearance to combustible, so it can rest right up against a two by four. A a B vent on an 80% efficient furnace can have maybe one inch or or a little bit bigger for the clearance to combustibles. And then a 60 to 70% efficient furnace that has a single wall pipe, you know, that's going to have probably about six inches or larger in clearance, but you have to check on your, your local codes on that. A lot of the local jurisdictions follow the International Fuel Gas Code book, and you can check that out. But anyway, getting back to this, if you see one PVC exhaust pipe, then that means that you're drawing your combustion air from within the building once again. But if you see two pipes, one is the combustion air and one's the exhaust. So that's preferable so that you don't turn the building into a vacuum. Anyway, what that's going to do for you is it's going to kind of give you an idea of what you're walking up and what you're walking into. You're going to know that between 60 and 70% efficient and 80%, there's different parts on those compared to the 90% efficient. It's going to be a different version of those parts, basically. But now if you're in front of the furnace, you're going to go ahead and open up the door, take a look at it. If it's a two door, you can remove the top door without losing the status code light. If the system is a single door, you want to watch and see, look through like there's a peep sight hole and you can see the LED status code light. You want to take note of that and write down uh, whatever the status code is with the short flashes and the long flashes, maybe that will signal, you know, whatever problem is occurring with that furnace, or at least it will give you some sort of insight on the problem. So an LED status code light would only be on furnaces that have a integrated furnace control. And that is a, a control board that controls both the ignition and also the fan control. A lot of times on those ignition boards, they're just ignition boards only. A lot of times they don't have a status light. Some do, but a lot of them are the older versions that don't. Anyway, so now you've walked up to the system. You know the efficiency of it. You kind of have an idea of what you're walking into. You've noted any status codes. And remember that you're going to look those status codes up and whatever is in the sequence of operation of that furnace before and after that part of the sequence, that's what you want to look into as far as what the problem could be. So say the inducer motor is running, but the pressure switch is not closing. Uh, it doesn't mean that the that the pressure switch is the problem. So in the case of a pressure switch, you don't have to go to the third step in the sequence of operation. And let me just run right through what the sequence of operation of a standard uh, forced air gas furnace is going to be. On a call for heat, when you have your 24 volts on the W terminal of the furnace control board, that's going to start the sequence of operation. And first step is the inducer motor is going to turn on. Second step is the pressure switch is going to close as long as there's no problem with the inducer motor or the condensate or the exhaust and intake. Next, the third step is that your hot surface igniter is going to turn cherry red. Fourth step is your direct ignition gas valve, if that's the type of valve that you have in there, is going to allow the full amount of gas flow to the burner. So that's step four. 
Step five is the flame rectification process to prove that there's a flame. Step six is going to be the blower on delay. So the furnace heat exchanger has to heat up first before you want to push air across that that heat exchanger. Otherwise, you're going to have a low temperature air getting pushed through the building. So you want to wait for that heat exchanger to heat up. So you you have your blower on delay. That's step six. And step seven is when the blower motor is turned on. So that's your seven step sequence of operation. Some people just call that the sixth step. So they combine the last two steps. But if the LED status code says that your pressure switch is tripped and there, there's a problem and it's open, then that could mean several different things. It doesn't just mean that the pressure switch is bad. It could mean that the step before that the inducer motor is not running. It could mean that maybe the inducer motor wheel inside, maybe that's chipped apart and it just is not applying the proper pressure at the, the pressure switch. You could have a condensate problem where the condensate is backing up into the furnace. You could have that the exhaust pipe is blocked or the intake is blocked. So it could be many different reasons besides just that the the pressure switch is bad. You don't want to be a parts changer. You really want to know what the furnace is supposed to do in order to troubleshoot it. So anyway, getting back to this now, you've walked up to the furnace. You've looked at the status code light. You already know the sequence of operation. You've looked up any status codes and now you're getting ready to check the furnace itself. The first thing is you're going to split this troubleshooting up into three steps. Step one is the the high voltage power into the system. That's your first thing. The second thing is going to be your control voltage, which will be your 24 volt controls. And then third is your sequence of operation. So you could have a problem at each one of those three sections of your troubleshooting. So if you have your status code LED lit, then you know you have power to the furnace. You don't know what that power is and if that there's not a voltage drop, but you do know that there's power there. Next, if the inducer motor is turning on, then you know that you have your 24 volt signal making it back to the furnace control board. So you're good there. So you're into the sequence of operation for heat. And so that's when you start needing to realize what each component in the furnace is supposed to do and when it's supposed to do it. So really knowing that sequence of operation is going to help you in order to diagnose a problem. And remember that if you're not even getting to the sequence of operation and maybe your blower motor is running all the time, that could be a whole nother set of issues. That could be a stuck blower motor relay contact. It could be that one of your safety switches is open. That could be just due to a thermal limit or it could be something more dangerous like a flame rollout switch. And those are only to be manually reset and don't just manually reset those. You gotta figure out why that flame rollout switch is tripping. But besides the the fan motor being on all the time, a lot of times you're going to get right into your sequence of operation after you have your low voltage applied at your W terminal. When diagnosing a furnace, you really want to be aware of how to check resistance values and measure voltages with your multimeter. You also need to be able to measure your flame rectification. And we have some videos on flame rectification at our channel on YouTube. We also have videos on measuring the pressure switches and even isolating them outside of the furnace with a pump and testing unit. And we have videos on just about every single component on a furnace, such as the gas valve, the inducer motor. We have the uh, control board. In fact, we just wrote an article at our website on troubleshooting control boards. So you make sure to check all those out. So make sure that you're checking out each of the component videos so that you have an idea of what you're running into in the field. We also have different versions of gas valves, such as a smart valve. We have different videos on on each component, the uh, single rod setup for spark ignition, the two rod setup. We have uh, videos on the hot surface igniter. So just make sure that you're investing in yourself at all times. All of us are in a constant state of learning all the time. And make sure that you're taking advantage of the website that we have. We have free calculators, free quizzes, and we have obviously our podcast there. We've got articles, quick tips, and also Q&A. We also have our refrigerant charging book that's there and the ebook and the workbook that goes along with that, as well as quick reference cards. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next time at the AC Service Tech Answers podcast. Thanks for listening to the AC Service Tech Answers podcast. The AC Service Tech Answers podcast is hosted by Craig Migliaccio and is produced by AC Service Tech, LLC. To find us, check out acservicetech.com, Facebook slash AC Service Tech, or check us out on YouTube at our AC Service Tech channel. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time at the AC Service Tech Answers Podcast.